Okay. So if you remember from Yvamis, we learned about a number of different women that are sort of intrinsic enemies to, uh, to another woman. And what's an example of that? Chamaisa, mother-in-law, Bas Chamaisa. I knew it, Daz, you first on the list. Bas <clears> Chamaisa, <throat> a the uh, <coughs> the daughter of a mother-in-law. Um, the Tsarosa is a co-wife. The Yavimta is a um Yavimta is any is a woman who's poten who potentially could be a Yavam, which would be the husband's sisters. I'm sorry, the husband's brother's wives, Ubas Bailo, and the daughter of her husband, but, but obviously not of her, so step uh, stepdaughter. So all these women typically they're not believed. All these women, if if they if they claim the husband died, they're not believed. Why? We presume they're trying to mess around with this woman, with with, with the wife. They're trying to get her to remarry and have kids, and then the kids will be mamzerim, and they'll be very happy to mess her over. However, with regard to bringing a divorce, they are believed. Mab and get So, what's the difference between a divorce and death? Why is it that with regard to death of the husband, they're not believed, but with regard to divorce, they are believed? The answer is very simple. What's the difference? By divorce, you have a piece of paper, right? It's much more much more difficult to forge, and therefore they're believed. A woman herself can bring a wife can bring her own divorce. But she has to say Now, obviously, it's interesting as who has to say only a shliach, a messenger. So we'll talk about a scenario where the woman is a messenger to bring her own divorce. And we'll explain that more in the Gemara. Says the Gemara, just like a woman is not believed to say her husband, uh, just like these women are not believed to say that, 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 that the wife's husband died, so too they're not believed to bring their own divorce. Obviously this price is exactly contrary to our Mishnah. Which is they are believed. So what's the resolution? It's not difficult. Depends if it's in Israel or outside of Israel. What's the difference? In Israel, when she brings a divorce, she does not need to say So therefore, she's believed. In other words, the typical typically these women, quote, we'll say a co-wife, which would not be believed to say the husband died. She is believed on a divorce. Why? Because she's carrying a divorce. And we don't even need her to say because it's in Israel, she doesn't need to say However, if she serves as a messenger to bring the divorce outside of Israel, so therefore she must say Hold on. Once she has to say we don't trust her, her testimony, just like you don't trust it when she is uh, when she claims her husband when she claims her husband died. Abayas, Abayas says to the contrary. Adrav, Ibchum Mustafa. The opposite makes true. It makes sense. Why? But Oretz in Israel, the Iasi Balam Aram Ashachin and Beid Ikla Meim Liki Kula Kamechav Mele Mehemno. In other words, what what's the purpose? Why is the sister-in-law trying to trick her, or the, or, or her co-wife? Because she wants to mess her over. It's much easier to mess her over in Israel than outside of Israel. Why? Because she brings a divorce in Israel. She doesn't need to say before an Achdav. Then the husband comes around and he says, uh, be Mikhaim the divorce, verify it. And we, and we require verification. And it won't be able to be verified because she, maybe she made up the document. However, in Chutzlar, it's outside of Israel. If she says, the husband cannot ask for verification. So even if she forged a document, she won't accomplish the purpose. Why is she doing this? She's doing this to, to, to mess her over, to get her sister stuck with a bunch of kids that are Mamzerim. Sister-in-law, or or uh, or uh, whatever, co-wife. Now, if the husband, if if she says the husband dies and the husband's still alive, what's going to happen? The husband's going to walk in, right? Let's say she says, "I the husband gave a divorce." She wrote up the whole divorce herself, and she verified it by saying "fun and echdav." And the husband comes to town and says, "I never wrote a divorce." What's going to happen? No, she he's not believed. He's not believed. We have a document here. 
says she said she says befana nechtaf. It works. Mm -hmm. So therefore, to the contrary, in chutz it's where when she says befana nechtaf, the document no longer needs to be verified. And if the husband claims it wasn't a real a real divorce, we don't believe him. So then she can't mess him over, mess her over, <clears throat> because we're going to believe her. Whereas in Israel, when she carries a divorce and turns out that the husband comes to town and says, uh, verify it, and he's not going to be able to verify it, then, then we're concerned that, that uh, she will remarry without verifying her divorce, and, and she'll, 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 she'll be messed over. Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> But Baritz in Israel, the Yossi Balma'ar, if the husband comes and claims the divorce is fake, Mashkin, but you listen to him, because you might say, because he's doing, she's doing this to mess her over, she's not believed. However, even if the husband claims and says the divorce is fake, we don't listen to him. So then, she should, she should, she should be believed. We have a Bryce that clearly supports Abaya's opinion. A woman is believed to bring her own divorce from a Kavachimer. What's the Kavachimer? A woman who is not believed to claim that, that, that this woman's husband died. So, the, again, see, let's say you have a, a, uh, a co wife. She comes and says, uh, our husband, uh, our husband dies. She's not believed. Even by the way, she, she's not even believed. Even if she gets married and has kids, why? Because we're concerned of Thomas Nafshi and Pelishtim. Then remembers the end of uh, Sh Shimshon's life, Samson's life. What happened was he was uh, the the, the uh, Pelishtim were, were torturing him in a uh, public uh, festivity in a large building. And he put himself by one of the pillars of the building and knocked it down. And he died together with the Pelishtim. So a concern that she doesn't care to have her own children on Zerim as long as she can mess over her, her co-wife's children. <clears throat> anyway, so the this co-wife is not believed to say that her husband that her husband died with regard to the other co-wife. She's believed about herself, for herself. <clears throat> However, she is believed. Her, She's not in a guna if her husband dies or in the co-wife is. If a, if, so yeah, that would happen, yeah. The one who said who claims the husband died is believed. The one who, who is not there can can make the claim is not believed, cannot rely on it. Okay. Um now but 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 a co-wife is believed to carry a divorce. He herself, second bottom line, she who she's believed a woman is believed to say her husband died. And it didn't certainly it should be the case that she should believed she should be believed to carry her her own divorce. Okay, so far no proof, but now is the main proof. When we mock up in top first word in the line on, on 24a, we mock them Shabasa. So let's examine where you're coming from. Just like the scenario of another woman who's bringing a divorce, who's typically not believed, a co-wife. She must say when she brings the divorce, Afhi, the woman herself, the wife herself, would bring her own divorce. She must say, and this is a clear proof that when are they believed, specifically where they, where they, they must say, Together, so we have a divorce. We have a, a debate here between <coughs> Abaya and Rav Yosef. According to Rav Yosef, when is the when is the Yavama, potential Yavama believed when she does not need to say B'fan and When she does need to say B'fan and she's not believed because we don't we don't rely on her testimony. And according to Abaya, it's the opposite, where she could mess him over, which is where she does not need to say B'fan and She is believed. She's not believed. But where she cannot mess him over because she must say before an echtav, she is believed. The other Amr Vashi, Masis and Ami Deka, Ravashi says, I have proof in the Mishnah. The Tony, the Mishnah says, Isha Atzma Vigita, Ravashi, Tehe Tsrikhaloim, before an echtav. The structure of the Mishnah indicates support for Abaya's opinion. 
because the next scenario after we talk about the co-wife and the Yavoma bringing the divorce, and now we talk about the woman herself bringing the divorce. And what, is, what does it say with regard to a woman bringing a divorce? You must say, Presumably that's because the entire Mishnah requires you to say, Okay, yo. I think more will point out even more, even more than that. According to Yosef, if you look at the Mishnah, the previous Mishnah we had was everybody is allowed, everybody is kosher to bring a divorce, except for Kher And who else was who else was not allowed to bring a divorce? A sumo, a blind person. Why can't the blind person bring a divorce? According to the Gemara's final opinion, because he can't say Bifan and Achtaf. So get now, where do you need to where do you need to say Bifan and Achtaf? Only in Chutzlarts. So the, the mission prior to our mission, the mission we saw, we saw yesterday, says, it, it, it's clearly talking about Chutzlarts. The woman herself brings divorce, must say Bifan and Achtaf. Must be also, we're talking about a scenario where she's in Chutzlarts. So the beginning of the mission or the end of the mission are clearly, clearly talking about outside of Israel. The middle, the middle scenario, according to Rav Yosef, is talking about inside of Israel. Because the only scenario you're believed, according to Rav Yosef, is when the co-wife or the Yavama or any of the other women who's typ- who are typically not believed bring the divorce inside of Israel. So they do not need to save a fun and That's where they're believed. We together? Mm-hmm. Eric, we together? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> So Reisha v'seifah b'chutz It's the first part and the last part of the mission are outside of Israel. Mitzias of arts, the first, the middle scenario is inside of Israel, which seems to be weird. So Mar says, yeah, you're right, it is weird. In, correct. Reisha v'seifah b'chutz l'aretz, mitzias of arts. Yeah, the first first and the end of the mission are outside, are, in, are outside of Israel. The middle part of the mission is inside. Mar says, the truth of the matter is it's not that difficult. Why not? Because Mimai, like, why would you say something like that? Mimitani, Ma ben get So what, in other words, the mission has to give a justification. Why is it that these women are not believed to talk about their husbands dying, but they are believed to talk about a divorce? And the mission says, Ma ben get shak sav because the divorce, the hand, the writing makes, makes, makes the point. Now, if we were talking about inside of Israel, what should, outside of Israel, what should, have, what should it have said? Lektani shak sav upeh it's her testimony and the divorce that are making the point. Because she needs to also say, she's outside of Israel. And therefore, it is logical to presume that the beginning and the end of the mission are outside of Israel. The middle of the mission is inside of Israel. Okay. A woman herself who brings a divorce must say, okay. Obvious question here. Isha, a woman, hold on a second. The moment she gets the divorce, she's divorced. And you only need to save a an if you send a messenger. There's no messenger. There's no need to save a an Echtav. The husband himself gives over the divorce. Do not need to save a an Echtav. Oh, no, we're good. Amr of Huna, but Amr of Huna says... We're talking about a scenario of Omer Leisis Garshi by Ella Bifne Bezden Plaini. Go to uh, go to Portland, you get a divorce, you'll be divorced when you get there. Hold on a second. Saif Saif, Kimate Hasim Garsha. What you mean to say is that there was a condition. The divorce was given on condition. The condition is here's a divorce on condition you give me $100. Or a condition that you travel to the top of, of, uh, of the Everglade, of the, the Mount Everest. That's fine. Go climb to the top of Mount Everest. It's a kosher divorce. But that has nothing to do with making a messenger. You're not a messenger. It's just a condition. So, okay. So, so what? So you have the condition, but the divorce happened previously, and uh, the condition said it should only take effect when you get to, to Portland. Okay. Okay. The Amr law, he says to her, When you get there to Portland, put it on the ground and then pick it up and that should be your divorce. What's the problem with this, of course? A divorce must be given, as the verse states, you must give it into her hands. 
And therefore, if he puts the divorce on the floor, lets her know the uh, the geo uh, the, the coordinates, go pick it up. Not a kosher divorce. This is no different. You're telling her get to get to these coordinates, put the divorce down on the floor, and pick it up. Same thing. Not a divorce because you need to give it. If he says, go pick up a divorce from wherever it is, not a kosher divorce. Like this. Um, the, the husband appointed the woman to be a shliach lahailocha. Shliach lahailocha is the husband's messenger. It's two, two types of shluchim. It could be the woman's messenger or the husband's messenger. The husband's messenger obviously carries the divorce and then gives it, and when he gives it, it's executed. Right? When the woman appoints a shliach, when that shliach receives the get, that's the execution of the get. When once she, until she gets it, that, that's ha, that's happenstance. It's not, as a matter of fact, if the divorce was destroyed before she got it, she's still divorced. She doesn't actually have to get it. The, the messenger represents her. It's a shliach lalocha, the husband's type of shliach. Sigmar says, "Hold on, he might have saw some." Adam uh, uh, So you're a shliach. The woman now is not get, actually getting divorced. She's being appointed to give the divorce to herself when she gets to Portland. <clears throat> when you get to Portland, become your own shliach to receive the divorce and receive your divorce. Okay, now there's a technical problem here. It's called Chaz Shliach It's a very, it's a very, uh, it's not so intuitive, but it doesn't really come up very, very often in Talmud. There's only a handful of times that we have this concept. Chaz Shliach sort of means like this. The a messenger cannot self execute a a um a, a shlichus. over here. She's serving as the as the giver and the receiver of the document. So in effect, she's the complete executioner of this act. And the requirement for shlichus is that theoretically, at least, it must be that the messenger can accomplish what he's what he set out to do and go back to the go back to the one who sent him and tell him what he did. Over here. Over here, that's not possible because she receives the divorce immediately as the as the receiving entity. One second. In other words, the, the the messenger the messenger must be able to execute to somebody else and then come back. Over here, there's there's no somebody else. She is the somebody else. So she sort of self receives the divorce. She gives it to herself. <coughs> <coughs> Can serve as the counterparty to fulfill your own shlichus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> <laughs> so because it's Literally. therefore this would not be valid okay so that this this explanation is no good so what happens okay what he says is like this get to Portland and then when you're in Portland appoint somebody else to be your so you give it to your own messenger okay now is a is a so we, we know that a husband can make a shleach to give it to the woman. A woman can make a shleach to receive from the husband. What about a what about a husband making a shleach to give it to the woman's shleach? There's two shluchim in between. Each one of them are sending representatives. So honey, chalamanda amar isha oisa shleach lekava gita miyad shleach vaylo. This makes sense according to the opinion that says a woman can appoint a messenger to receive the divorce from her husband's messenger. In this case, it's weird because. She appoints a messenger to receive a divorce from herself. She serves as the as the messenger for the husband. Did we, did we did I miss this in there? Can you have a messenger appoint a messenger? Or like like appoint a messenger? Appoint Typically a messenger. not, unless they're specifically commanded to do so. And we'll get to that. That's the that's the final resolution. Okay. Um okay, so uh so okay, that would make sense if the if 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 the halacha considers the woman appointing appointing a shleach to if the halach allows a woman's representative to receive a divorce from the man's representative. <laughs> According to the opinion that says that that is not that is not valid, it's not permissible. 
Michael Amemer. So then, what's the story? In other words, a, if a if a woman cannot if a woman cannot appoint a representative to receive to receive a divorce from her husband's representative, so we still don't have a solution. So, okay, so Mara says, hold on a second. Why can't the woman's messenger representative received from the husband's representative. Time in my mission, it could be Zion the Baal because, it, because maybe the husband doesn't want that. He wants his messenger to give the divorce directly. But her, by her sending a representative, it's sort of insulting to the husband. She doesn't even want to take the divorce. She sends a representative to take it on her behalf. Okay, fine. But over here, that's what he's telling her to do, so there's no problem. However, there's a second opinion. Okay, so we resolve it according to that, that opinion. Okay, what is Chatzera Balachamikan? If a man gives a woman a divorce, a divorce, this is how he does it. He puts it into his friend's courtyard and then she buys the property from her friend, from his friend. So that's how she gets the divorce. Yeah. When we're just saying that you have to give it to him in the hand to hand without it being. Otherwise, not. that would work. But let's say this is what she did. Okay. Let's say she the husband put the divorce I into. There was the, the local share. Even if it's on the it's on the ground, right? Sorry. I thought it was not kosher if it was on the on the ground. It, correct. It's not kosher it's on the ground. But over here, it's a little different. Okay. Over here, it never got onto the ground. Why yeah, not? Okay. Why not? We'll explain. Because over here, what did he do? He put it into his friend's property. His friends his friend acquires a divorce now. And now. She acquires the divorce by buying a friend's property. Okay, why doesn't this work? Because, so, so again, now the question is, why does your property acquire your own stuff? There's two different, two reasons. Property. The wrong reason is because of shlichus. Your property serves as your representative. If it did, this would actually be a kosher divorce because it, the, 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 um, uh, the, his friend's property serves as a messenger. And that messenger gifts it to the woman the moment she acquires a property. However, that's not the reason. The reason is mishum yad, mishum or yad. In other words, it's an acquisition, and therefore it's not it's not acceptable because, like you said, there's no giving of the divorce here. Because people might confuse chotzer with shliach, that's why we basically say that the the woman's shliach can't receive a divorce from the husband, the husband's shliach. Because people might confuse it with this scenario of chotzer, it might confuse the concept of chotzer of property, a property serving as the agent of acquisition, with a woman sending a shliach. I mean, you could like suspend it in the air from the ceiling, right? Like, like what do you a, mean? A fishing line, and then she could grab it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, what do you mean? I'm thinking of the property you saw on the property. Oh, I'm just thinking of the way that you know she acquires it, and then it still stays. Good. So, so uh, because in other words, because property could could be confused with a messenger, so therefore we don't allow because we therefore we don't allow the woman's representative to receive from the husband's representative. Okay. Uh, okay, so if that's the case, Michael Nehmer, so if that's the case, then how could it be that a woman sends the divorce to herself? She's the messenger. She's the husband's representative to divorce herself. So the Gemara says, the law have a You should be a shliach lahaylocha. When you get to Portland, shavi shliach lahaylocha. Make another shliach lahaylocha. The kabi is gitach minei and receive it directly from that shliach. Simple resolution. The Yibay Seima, another simple resolution. To Amr Allah, he says to her, have a shliach lahaylocha adam atas hasam. You should be a shliach lahaylocha until you get to that, that destination, Portland, let's say. V'chim atas hasam, emer kami beidina b'fadanach tafadanach. And when you get there, say in front of the court, tafadanach taf, umashi beidina shliach v'leisach niyale. And make the court a messenger so they should give the divorce to you. And, and uh, that, that would be another scenario where the woman would have to say before an act of, and that explains how she can serve as her own represent, as a representative to divorce herself. And Hajar Lachamei Beget, this concludes the parak discussing the shlichus of how to bring a divorce. <coughs> now, we begin the next, the, uh, the uh, next parak, which of course has the famous B word, Sugya. You know what's that? The B words. B words? We'll get to oh, it. Just, can we kind of the chatzer is the choir, right? Chatzer is, is a courtyard. The, the, the chatzer, a courtyard, the like... courtyard that's watched has the ability to choir on your behalf. So if you think of, for example, if you have 
if you have a courtyard and a bird lands in your courtyard, you do not acquire the bird, right? Because the bird is going to fly away. Now, the fact that you have a fence around, it doesn't make a difference. However, let's say the bird gives birth to, it has eggs, lays eggs in your courtyard, then you acquire it. Because those eggs are watched. You have a fence around it, presumably. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody is able to easily come in and take it. So therefore, those, those eggs are yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any divorce that's written not for a woman. It's not even written for a woman. We'll explain what this means in a moment when we get to the Gemara. Apostle, it's not kosher. Okay, it's not, how, how did that happen? He was, he was going through the marketplace. He heard the, the uh, scribes, they were, they were writing a divorce. We'll soon see that these scribes, they weren't even writing a divorce. They were practicing writing a divorce. So they made up a divorce. Feral divorce is Yenta. Okay, Ish Pliny, Megarish is Plinus. Mimak and Pliny from the city of uh, of Hamalulu, Vamar Zeshmi, Vizesh, Shem Ishti. He says, This is my name, this is my wife's name. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to buy it. Possible the Garish play. He cannot divorce this divorce. Again, this divorce was not even written for a divorce, it was written for practice. Not kosher, can't use it. Yes, Sir McCain, moreover, Kosa the Garish is Ishti. Vinimlach, Vinimlach. He decided a guy decided to divorce his wife. Then decided, no, you know what? I don't want to divorce my wife. He found a, a guy in his city. He says, oh, we have the same names, shame shame ishtacha, and our wives' names are the same. So here's a divorce. You can divorce your own wife. He cannot divorce his wife. Yes, sir, McCain. Moreover, he had two wives, which my same shavis, and their names were similar. He wrote, he decided to divorce the 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 old the, the wife we had for longer. He cannot divorce the wife we had for less years. Yes, Sir McCain, moreover, This, of course, is the famous Brayer question. He says to the scribe, I have two wives, they both have the same name. I'd like you to write a divorce to whichever one I decide to divorce. <laughs> It is not kosher. That is because ain brera. What's the what's the question of brera? The question is hover hadover lemafreya. Can we? In other words, tomorrow he decides he wants to divorce the younger wife. Mm -hmm. So he wants to say that retroactively, at the moment the document was written, the scribe had in mind to divorce the younger wife. Is that a valid uh, uh, mechanism? And of course, our mission says ain brera is not valid tomorrow. By the way. We will discuss, we will go, hopefully get to the entire city of Brera. It's, it's short but difficult. Um, and we have an hour to do it. So anyone who wants to join us, welcome. <clears throat> yeah, this is really the, uh, you know. Having two wives in the same house with the same name. The difficult Gemara. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Okay. Cuts of the Garish is Ishtav and Imlach. The, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the first scenario of the Mishnah was where he had the scribes writing a divorce. The Mishnah actually thinks that the scribes were writing a real divorce. So what's the difference if the scribes are writing a divorce to divorce some other guy, for some other guy to divorce his wife, or whether he found the other guy holding the divorce and asked him for it? It would be the same thing. What's, why is one more or less than the other one? So the Gemara says, hold on, isn't that the same scenario as the first, the first case? And Rapapa, no. We're talking about scribes that are actually practicing. Amr Vashi, Vashi says, they can have the say from Makram, but the Tani say from Kurram. The scribes are actually, they're teaching other people how to write. Instead of reading what they're, what they're supposed to say, they're, they're speaking for other people to practice. So Shmami, no, this is clear that this is sort of some educational experience going on. It, by the way, like I pointed out before, writing a divorce is different than writing than writing regular stam. So there, are, there are some very significant changes that are made. It, the basic of which you don't even write it on cloth. Divorces are typically written on like acid-free paper. It can last a long time. Okay. We say a good divorce is better than a good marriage. More important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The lawyers, right? Okay, my yes, um, uh, Shmami, no, my yes, okay. What, what, why is each each scenario of the mission a step up? Tony Baby Bishmal, Bishmal explained the first scenario is the Lloyd's, um, 
the second scenario is Loiza, the first scenario is Loiza Shanet of Shalalish and Gerashin. The first scenario is not only a scenario where it wasn't even written for intention of divorce. Ella Avza, the second scenario, where, which is somebody else trying to divorce his wife, Shanet of the Shum Gerashin, possible. It's also possible because it wasn't written for that guy. Veloiza Shanet of Shalalish and Gerashin Diday. And not only if, if it wasn't written for his own divorce, Ella Avza Shanet of Shum Gerashin Diday, possible. And uh, not only a divorce that was written for uh, the divorce that was at least written for him. I'm sorry. Not only is divorce that's possible if it was written for a different woman, different different couple, even if it was written for the same couple, it's also possible. 30 seconds here. In, in other words, the the uh, divorce in the second the third the first scenario of the Mishnah is is not even a divorce it's a practice document second scenario is a divorce it just belongs to somebody else third scenario is no 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 it's divorce and it belongs to this specific couple this specific well I don't know it's it's a it's a polygamous relationship right so it's this man with one of his two wives. Okay, and not only is not only is it not kosher if a man is not sure which of the two if he wrote it for the wrong one of the two wives, mm -hmm. but even if he wasn't sure which of the two wives he wrote it for, it's also kosher. And that's obviously the concept of Embraer. He wasn't sure, meaning that he created this condition that he could decide later, ex post facto, which one he wants to, which one he wants to divorce. My time, what's the reason? Okay. If it would have if it would have said Vinosan Safer Crisis Biodo, Havamino, Lemiute Ech Kamo. Uh if it would have if one second, if the, the verse would not have said the cost of the cost of the cost of love and it would have just said Vinosan. He gives it to her. It means it has to it has to be written for the purposes of divorce, but it doesn't have to be written for his purposes of divorce. Uh, however, if he decided to divorce his wife and then he changed his mind, to in that scenario, he did have in mind to, for, the, for the sake of divorce. So the verse says you have to write the divorce and you have to give it for the, for the sake of divorce, which means it has to be written for the sake of your own, the sake not of somebody else's wife, but of your own wife. Okay, and the next scenario is if the Torah would not have written the word law for her, I would think that, that if it's for him, it's enough. So if he has two wives with the same name, that's sufficient. He can divorce either wife. Torah therefore says the cost of law to the specific woman. The safe in the last scenario where he's not sure which woman he wants to divorce, what's that coming to tell me? We do not, we say that Brera is not a valid concept. You cannot decide ex post facto which one you actually had in mind. And that does not require a, ver a verse, and that's not require a scriptural source. We know it. How do we know it? That, of course, is tomorrow, the big Brera Sunya. And uh, yeah, it's actually pulls from all over the place. It's uh, we're able to make it. It's a quite, quite an enjoyable experience, at least in my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's great signal. Yeah. Nope. <laughs>
from the tip to like a concept legally, would it be five four sided? Uh, Hutzer is a is is an is an enclosed property. Enclosed. That's, like that's museum, like museum. watched in the sense that the police, like my backyard. Uh, that, that, that's already so now I'm talking about the legal definite the legal like, concept of Hutzer. Legal concept is it's completely enclosed or so it would have to be enclosed enough that it wouldn't um that that for whatever it's needed for. In other words, if you have a uh you know you have those properties that have a uh, cow wire is like surrounding the property. So it's protected for cows. It's not protected for, I don't know, rabbits, right? They can run in and out or goats. If you put on a, you know, rabbit, rabbit netting and a rabbit ends up in your property somehow, then, uh, then sure enough, you acquire the rabbit. Whatever, it's yours. Whatever it's meant to. Protect. Whatever it's protected for, not whatever it's meant to, whatever is actually protected by it. So even if it's not the intention, let's say you have a, uh, a cow fencing and maybe protects cars too. I don't know. Can a hill be a side of a... Yeah, why not? As long as it, to the extent that it, in other, that, as follows, that when we, when we say a chutzr as a legal mechanism for acquiring something, it has to, it has to actually be secured. And whatever would secure that item is sufficient. It could be the, the property is naturally geographically secure. You know, maybe it's, you know, on a hilltop and you can't drive a car off it. And if a car, car ends up there, it's your car. It's an interesting concept. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. If you buy a house and you find the treasure inside, is it yours or not? So, yeah. so this is a well, let's say you sold it before you knew about it. <laughs> so they would have acquired it, right? Then, so presumably it's part of the sale because Chatzar is only, we have to see Chatzar is, was, what, is, the question is also whether it's kind of Shalemi Das or not. If you knew about it or didn't know about it. So let's say somebody comes into your house, he's staying over, he, he gets angry, he bashes the wall, and he finds a treasure. He's like, whose treasure is it? You acquired it, but you didn't know about it. So that's the question whether Chatzar works Shalemi Das. So if it works Shalemi Das, then it's yours. If it doesn't work Shalemi Das, you, ne you never acquired it. When you bought the house, you never included it. It was never included because you never knew about it. What if you like stipulated before anything that's unknown? Or... What was that? What if you stipulated before? It doesn't stipulated. make a difference. You can't you can't acquire something if you don't, you don't know about if it. If you don't have a legal mechanism to acquire it. Thank you.